Hey everyone, it's Steve from The Garden. In this video, I'm gonna go over how I'm planting tomatoes this year, including how I'm trellising them. And I have a new method I'm gonna use this year, or at least for some of the tomatoes. But before I do that, I'm gonna go back in time to younger Steve for just a couple minutes to go over some bed prep. Thanks, future Steve. All right, so what we're gonna do to get this tomato bed started for future Steve is I got my woven ground cover and I did hit the edge with a torch just so that it won't fray. And this bed is about three feet wide and this is a four foot wide uh, woven ground cover. So it'll definitely cover all the edges completely. And even though it's kind of mounded a little bit here in the center. Since the edge of this bed has bricks and they're not put glued together at all, um, I'm gonna just take off the top layer of bricks Put the landscape fabric underneath it and then put the bricks back on top. With the edge underneath the bricks, all I have to do now is roll this out to cover the bed. You can see we have the woven ground cover covering the entire bed. So now all I have to do is cut this. Move that out of the way. Fire up the torch. And I'll hit the edge. Much like I did with the other side, I'll simply tuck the end of this underneath the bricks. Since most of this bed is going to be trellised with a cattle panel, the cattle panel is 16 feet long, this bed is 20 feet long, so it's not going to cover the entire bed. Each of these lines is one foot apart on the ground cover. So I'm going to put the T-post to hold the uh, cattle panel in, kind of like in between these two lines here. And I'll do three holes for three T-posts. For burning the holes into the woven ground cover, I'm going to use a flame weeder, which connects up to the propane tank like for your gas grill and has a valve at the, at the wand for controlling the gas level. With the hole for the T-post burned in, I'm just going to use a post hole driver to drive that T-post down to where I need it. I got all the holes burned in for the peppers and then on the back side will be the tomatoes. And I got one marigold in there. That was a hole that was uh, burned in the wrong place. So put a marigold in there to help out. You can also see I got my drip irrigation line put in underneath the woven ground cover. Here I got a container with worm castings. Now since the bed slopes this direction a little bit, or that direction if I'm on the other side. I'm gonna run the drip irrigation system kind of toward the center of the bed. Now the reason I didn't staple down the landscape fabric yet is because I wanna be able to get underneath here as I'm planting. So that you know, as I dig the hole out, I can also get my hand underneath, get it nice and deep. So with the hole dug, I'm just going to take some of the worm castings, pop them down in there. Take just a small amount of the Balanced Organic Fertilizer. Get my plant out. Get it down through the hole. And I can come up underneath it and move all that dirt back in place. And I'll kind of like mound it up. So it's nice and sturdy, and then the roots can kind of grow along the part of the stem I covered up. Now where the trellis ends, I have two tomatoes that are still going to go in, where my caterpillar is not quite long enough to reach the end of the bed. So for those, I'm going to use a pole. So here I got uh, electrical metal conduit that's half inch, and it's 10 feet long. 
I'm gonna use a pulse hole uh, hammer to go and hammer these uh, conduits in. My pole's driven in. Now I can just dig a hole the same way I would do the other tomatoes. So here's where the real difference comes in. Is unlike the kale panel where I'll have like panels or holes where I can kind of weave the plant through, I'm gonna have to use string to tie this up to the pole. So first I'll simply wrap it around the pole a few times. Tie it in a knot. Do the same on the other side. It just kind of keeps it nice and secure. And for anybody that's buying string for doing this type of stuff, this is twisted uh, string. And it doesn't work as well because it can it has a tendency to come apart. Now I use a, a lighter to kind of just burn it apart so that the end cripples, you know, and it doesn't fray that way. But if you had braided string, that's much better. Now I probably get, could get myself some of those uh, tomato clips and it would work for doing this. But for right now, I'll just go ahead and tie like a loose knot here on the end just to keep the plant more or less in place. Here we go. With all the plants for this bed in place as far as the tomatoes are concerned, and I got my drip irrigation in place, I can go ahead and stack my brick back up. And then I can also go through and staple down this side of the landscape fabric. The third method I'm going to use for trellising is the Florida weave. And I'll use this method for my determinant tomatoes, which will be my summer pick. So what I do is I put a piece of tape on the conduit that was cut in half. So it's five feet total length. And this is, I think, about 16 inches off the bottom, or well, maybe 18 inches. So what I do is I just pound this down so that the tape is right at the soil level. And then I'll just space out the pole so I can just have two poles to cover two plants. With both poles in place, I can dig a hole and plant these just like I did the other ones. Or I dig the hole, I put some castings in there, then just a little bit of balanced organic fertilizer. I want to take a moment to show you what the soil looks like underneath. So you can see there's a really good color to it. And there's lots of organic materials in there, which is what we need. Since we have our poles in and we got our plants in, let's go ahead and do the first level of the Florida weave. So these plants are fully supported. So I'm just wrapping the string around this pole a couple times. Do a couple knots on there. And I'll weave on one side of the plant, and then the second plant I go on the opposite side. Go around the pole, and pull that nice and tight. I'll slip a knot in there. And then on the way back, I go on the opposite side of the stem on both plants before wrapping it around the pole a few more times. Again, making sure it's nice and tight against the poles. And I'll use my lighter to burn the string off so it doesn't fray. Then I can tie a knot in place to hold it all together. Okay, there we go. We got our first level of string on here. Now these plants will probably get up to maybe about this tall. So maybe slightly taller than what the poles are. And I'll have to do, you know, three, maybe four levels of string, you know, three or four levels of string total. Um, but just, we'll see how it goes. So I have three more indeterminate plants that are going to go in this spot here. And I'll use the pole method like I did with the last two tomatoes over there. Well that'll be it for my tomato planting for for now. 
I have those three plants which I still need to put the poles in for, but I'll get those on another day and because it's starting to get a little bit late right now. Now I've never used the kale panel trellis method on tomatoes before, so that'll be a new thing for me. And I think I might get some of those tomato clips to make the job of connecting the tomatoes to the trellis a little bit easier. If you have any questions about the methods I'm using the trellis to tomatoes, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them. But until then, I hope you enjoyed, got something out of this, and we'll see you on the next one.